Hey there, this is MathCamp321, and this is a quick video on the review of logarithms. Hopefully you learned this in pre-calculus, so we're just going to touch upon some of the important points. The first of which is that logs are really just exponents. So you might have seen the structure last year. The log of a base b, if that equals x, we can rewrite this logarithmic form into something called exponential form, and that would turn into b to the x is equal to a. Now when I teach this in my class, I refer to that conversion as a swing. If we start at this little base b here, I raise that to this power here, x, and then the answer is a. So b to the power of x is equal to a, and that's precisely what this is over here. And I refer to that maneuver as a swing. So let's do a quick example. If I were to convert this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation, and I do a quote unquote swing, I would start down here at the eight, I'd raise it to the power of five thirds, and then hopefully my answer would be 32. So let's see if, if, if that in fact is the case. Eight to the five thirds power is equal to 32. Let's see if that's true or not. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 to the 5th is 32. So this is in fact correct. So this logarithmic equation that I wrote is actually valid. Now let's go to point B. There are two special bases frequently seen when working with logs. One is the number 10, and the other is E. If you see a log expression and it doesn't have a base, like right here, there's nothing written, then it is an assumed base of 10. So if you see log of a with nothing, then that's really log of a base 10. If you see this new notation LNA, well, LN is a, it stands for the natural log, and it's reserved specifically for when the base is E. So you would really never see LN base E as it's written here, but that's really what it means. LN in its own right means that the base is E. So it would be a little bit redundant to write the E again. So if you see a log expression and there's no base, then it's an implied base of 10. And if you see LN, then it's an implied base of E. So here are two more examples. Um, if I were to perform a swing in this example here, the implied base is 10. And if I do a swing to see if this is valid, I would start at that little base and I'd raise it to the power of three, and I would hope that the answer is a thousand. And let's see if that's gonna be the case. 10 to the power of three, does that equal a thousand? Well, yes, 10 cubed is a thousand, so that works. All right, now we've got another example, and that is ln of e equals one. So again, there's no base here, but there is an implied base of E. So I'll go ahead and write that in. And now I'll do a swing to see if this is a valid log equation. So I'll start at this little base of E. I'll raise it to the power of one, and hopefully this is the answer. So I end up getting E to the first is equal to E. Is that true or not? Well, of course it is. Anything to the power of one is itself, so that works too. Okay, now we're going to go on to discuss five properties that we see often in logs. The first is the product rule of logs. And what this property says is, if you're taking the log of a product, which is things that are multiplied together, then it's going to be the log of the first thing plus the log of the second thing. What's important here is that it's a plus. And I've provided an example here. Suppose we wanted to apply the product rule for logs to this uh, natural log expression. Well, we've got two factors here, a 2 and an x. So I can rewrite this as the natural log of 2, 2 being the first factor, plus the natural log of the second factor, or the natural log of x. So this would be the answer to that simplification using the product rule for logs. Let's go on to slide 2. Okay, now that we're on slide number two, we're gonna to continue to look at some of the properties. 
The next property of logs that we're going to look at is the quotient rule for logs. And what this rule says is that if you're taking the, the log of a quotient, it's going to be the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. And what's important here is the fact that it's going to be a minus in between. And I do have an example for you. So in this example, we have the natural log of the quotient 10 over x. Well, this can be rewritten as the, the natural log of the numerator, or the natural log of 10, minus the natural log of the denominator, or minus the natural log of x. So this is just a quick little example just to remind you of the quotient rule for logs. Now we're going to go on to the power rule for logs, which states that if you're taking the log of something that's being raised to a power, that power can leap in front of the word log. So if I'm taking the log of a to the m base b, that, that can be rewritten as m log a base b because that power of m can leap down in front. So here's an example of this. I'm going to rewrite the natural log of root x as the natural log of x to the 1 half. So I'm taking the natural log of something that's being raised to a power. Well, that power can leap down in front, and I can call this 1 half natural log x. Because of all this leaping, I sometimes refer to the power rule as the power ranger rule. And this makes a lot of students very, very happy. Okay, moving to property number four, the change of base formula. If you are evaluating log A base B, and it's, it's not one that you could swing and do in your head, you can use your calculator and do the log of A over the log of B, or the natural log of A over the natural log of B. And a mnemonic that I tell my students, or a little catchphrase that I tell my students, is that Remember when you're using the change of base formula that the base goes in the basement. So notice our base B here, in either case, ends up in the denominator. So let's just write that down. The base goes in the basement. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. Let's evaluate the log of 12 base 3. So I know that if I do a swing here, 3 to some number, which I don't know, should equal 12. So I know that 3 squared is equal to 9, and I know that 3 cubed is equal to 27. So 3 to some mystery number equals 12. That mystery number is going to be something between 2 and 3, and I'm going to use the change of base formula to figure this out. So I have a choice. I could write this as the log of 12 over the log of 3. Notice how that 3, the base, ended up in the basement. Or I could do the natural log of 12 over the natural log of 3. Either case, the answer is going to end up being the same. So I could just use log or natural log. And hopefully it's going to be some decimal between 2 and 3. Let me grab the calculator and actually do that. Okay, so I have the calculator in hand, and I'm going to do the uh, log of 12 divided by the log of 3. And when I do that, I get 2.261. Remember, on the AP exam, you want three decimal places. So 2.261. That's if you truncate. If you round, it's 2.262, and that would be all right as well. All right, let's go to our last property, and I call this the reflexive property. And this says, if you have b raised to the log of a base b, then the answer is just a. So if you ever see this kind of funky looking expression, and this value here matches with this value here, then the answer is just going to be this value. And it says here, this happens because log of a base b equals the log of a base b. So I've written that as an example. Let's suppose we wanted to swing on this problem. That means I would focus my attention on this little base here, b. I would raise that base b to this, and the answer would be that. So let's see what happens when I actually do this swing. I've got my base of b, which is where I start. I'm raising it to this big power, this, this sort of messy thing. And when I do the swing, it ends up equaling a. 
So I call this the reflexive property because in geometry, if something equaled itself, we called it reflexive. If a segment was congruent to itself or an angle was congruent to itself. So because this thing is congruent to itself or equal to itself, we end up with this, this uh, property here. So how does this impact this next example? Well, since this value 7 is the same as this value 7, then the answer is just going to be this number. So the answer here is going to be 23. Okay, let's move on to the third slide.